Greetings, everybody, and welcome to the Grace, Peace, and Balance podcast by Gabi abdel Gadir. This is episode 97, and I am honored to have uh, the youngest guest that I have ever had uh, in all the years that I have been doing this, in all the podcasts that I have been doing this. His name is Giovanni. Let me just get your bio. Why did this thing, why did this thing let me down? Giovanni Negron Garcia. He is the proud owner of Geo Effect Life Coaching and Public Speaking LLC. Geo, we call him Geo, so I'm going to keep on saying Geo, but his name is Giovanni. So Geo is an aspiring and is an an aspiring author, motivational speaker, certified life coach, and first-generation college student. He is currently self-publishing his own book, which is coming out February 26th, right? Yeah, look, Passion, Purpose, and the Pursuit of Happiness is the title of the book, which will be available for pre-sale during, uh, on February 26th at 12 p.m., Eastern time. Throughout his journey, Gio encountered numerous battles with poverty and his mental and physical health. He, his physical health was so bad, his physician warned him that his life was going to end by the age of 35 if he did not break his unhealthy eating habits. Gio did the unthinkable and lost over 200 <clears throat> pounds in less than a year. Oh my God, that's unbelievable. Gio has become an, an inspiration around the nation, actually internationally now, yep. as he yep. displays his message of go inspire others. So Gio, G-I-O stands for go inspire others. Um, and he helps professionals achieve their goals and dreams based on their career aspirations. And I will be sharing his bio and his social media links, both on Podbean and YouTube. So please do get in touch with him. The young generations uh, need someone like Gio. Gio, welcome to my podcast. Oh my God, it is such an honor to be here. Um, I was excited for this all week. Oh. Um, once you reached out to me and told me that you wanted me to be on your show, I was just ecstatic. Um, because I love Canada. I have I not know. been here yet, but knowing that I know someone from Canada and I know other people now, I was like, wow, I'm actually going to be on an international podcast now. And I was just looking forward to it, especially after a stressful week um, with grad school and all. This is this is what I love um, doing, just, just being with people like you and Thank being you. able to promote yourself a bit. <laughs> okay, forget the other Canadians. You're mine. I'm adopting you. You're my son now. <laughs> I have a Puerto Rican son. <laughs> I know, Puerto Rican son. Yeah, I love that. So talk to me. I know I have read your bio. Let's go back to you growing up. Can you share with our listeners a little bit about you growing up? Yes, uh, I always say back to my humble beginnings, I, I'm a poor Puerto Rican kid um, from a small town called Reading, Pennsylvania. Um, I grew up with two loving parents, caring parents who um, disciplined me um not that often I, I did get in trouble I got in trouble but they disciplined me to the point that they didn't want me to repeat their mistakes they didn't want me to fall down the same path that they did and they always kept me out of trouble um again the love was always there I had a father um as we know with Hispanic households you know men Hispanic men tend to hide their emotions uh, internalize everything, give us the wrong interpretation of what it takes to be a man. But my father always told me it was, it's okay to cry. It's okay to be a man and cry and express yourself. Um, and you know, my mother was the same way. She always cared for me. Um, our family was impacted by the 2008 recession here in the in America. And you know, my father lost his job, never got a job ever since, unfortunately. Okay. And um, my mother was pretty much the primary t caretaker and it took a, such a strong hit on my life because I had to experience their pain uh, as a young kid and someone who understood a lot at my age. I knew what was going on. I know why some things were missing in our household, why things were not coming back, um, why things were being sold constantly. And, um, you know, how old were you at that time? I believe it was 2008. So I'm 23 now. So uh, I was pretty young. I think I was. About 10, I think. 
I, I can't do math. That's why I'm not a math major. <laughs> um, yeah. I think pretty young. So I was. 2008. And around there. Yeah. 10, 11, yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. It, it was tough. It was very tough on me and, you know, my, my siblings. And it was not easy being the youngest because, you know, your parents don't want to tell you everything. They don't want to tell you the hard truths. But I learned the hard truths very early. And I knew I never want to repeat that situation again. Um, so I've been working hard ever since to not repeat history. No, to repeat history. Yeah. And your siblings are older? Like, how many do you have? Yes. So I have three older siblings. So I'm the youngest. Um, the youngest. What, okay. yeah. What's funny about my siblings is that my father's name is Joel. My two brothers' names are Joel. Oh. Um, my brother's name is Joel Need, which um, is a combination of my mother's middle name uh, and my father's first name. And I came out Geo. So I'm, I'm pretty unique when it comes to everything, how I was born and to my name. You know, it's pretty cool being the youngest and I'm being a little bit different from my three siblings, but they all um, created a path for me um, for today. So I'm grateful for them. The youngest and the most successful 23 year old. Oh my goodness gracious. Yeah, so hey. talk to me. So how did you get, talk to me about your eating habits. So what was, were you because you were stressed out? You were worried? Is that how, why you were eating? Your eating habits were bad? So I, I feel when everybody has poor mental health, they have to find comfort in something. Yeah. Um, sure. My comfort was food. You know, it brought me happiness. It made me feel good. Um, and the amount that I was eating, um, it just made me feel comfortable. It made me feel lazy. You know, after eating a good meal, you get to sleep. Um, you feel better, you know. And But the, the quantities that I was eating was not normal. Um, sometimes I will eat a whole Domino's pizza and not even 15 minutes later, I'm eating a pint of Ben and Jerry's, um, wow. food, de calorie dense foods that are, have no nutrition whatsoever. I don't care what anyone tells me. Um, you know, it just wasn't healthy. And I will do this not probably four times in a week, um, or more. And I will find myself to be in hard financial situations. But not only as a kid, my I noticed my parents had to feed me more um, because I was constantly hungry. But again, the mental health was um, related to that. Yeah. Um, and it just got worse as I grew up. And I think it, it really destroyed me um, as I got to college, you know, um, because I, I had a girlfriend at the time and I found that I got cheated on. And at that point, food was all I had. Um, I was losing friends left and right. I was just not be, being this person that I knew I could be. Um, I lost all sense of passion and purpose. And uh, food my, was my only escape. And um, it destroyed me. And I, I'm, I, I know we want to get more into detail, but overall, it, it really did. So how did you get help, like for the mental health, for the depression? You know, I'm guessing you were depressed. So... How did, did you get help? Uh, I was in therapy for a while, um, but I, I had something against taking medication. Yeah, I didn't feel like I medication was working. I felt like I was constantly being repetitious every single therapy session. Um, it's not that I don't trust a professional. Um, obviously, they went through all the years of schooling. I trust them. They are um, professionals beyond measure. But I just found myself saying, why can't I do this on my own? I shouldn't be dependent of medication. I shouldn't be dependent of a, of a therapist. Um, so I really had to look at myself. I really had to look at myself and especially during the journey at all times where the world stops, it was during the pandemic, the start of the pandemic. I really had to look and assess my health. And I had so many health complications. I had sleep apnea. I had um, hypertension. I had Oh my God, I, I can't even name it. There's so many things wrong. I had vitamin C deficiency, vitamin D oh, deficiency. Wow. Um, I was just not good. It, it just wasn't good. And then add on depression and anxiety. It's just, wow. It was, huh. um, so yeah, it just wasn't good. So I, how I got help was, again, my parents just pretty much giving, giving it to me straight that, um, that I was not getting better. And my physician, uh, as mentioned in my bio, 
looked me in the eye and said, I'm going to die by 35 if I don't change anything. So I got scared straight. It just hit me very hard at that time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So was it easy? It wasn't easy to get to, to, to make that decision to start a diet and to start eating healthy and to get yeah. rid of the dominoes and all. It, it wasn't easy because again, since that was my comfort, that's, that was my love really. Um, as, and it sounds like an exaggeration, but that was practically the love of my life. Food. Oh, yeah, uh, I, know. It, I know a few people, trust me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had to give that up and now I have no love in the world. Even if, from the love that I was receiving from my parents, I didn't feel it. Um, so with food being gone and having to change my whole lifestyle, I just knew it was for the best. Um, and as I, I, I've always told people, you know, I did get bariatric sleep surgery. Um, so the process there is not easy. Uh, that's, I had to change my life in a matter of months. This is not a year change. This is this is a matter of months. I have to shift my mindset. I have to change my eating habits. I'm not going to be able to eat the stuff that I used to, which, uh, again, I do treat myself every once in a while. Um, if you know my journey with Oreos, yeah. um, I get that up. So, yeah, um, it wasn't easy. It wasn't it, easy. Did you go to the gym? Were you exercising in addition to the diet? Yeah, uh, I was I was exercising. I was lighter because with surgery, you know, uh, I couldn't lift as much oh, weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't do exercise ex as excessively, but I chunked it out. I, I gave myself a chance to really just um, enjoy what I was doing, feeling, the, um, regaining the strength that I lost. Um, but I felt stronger mentally. Um, I told people that the day that I got surgery, which is February 4th, 2021, um, you know, and I mentioned the bigger version of me as Big Boy Geo. Um, I tell people that version of me died on that table. And when I woke up, I felt like all the pain went away. It was time for something new. And yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so. Is there anybody who inspired you to keep going or any books that inspired you to keep going? Um, what really inspired me was, was my dreams. Honestly, it was my dreams and, you know, my mentor, Carlos Ajeda Jr. Um, Carlos Ajeda Jr. is actually the owner of Cool Speak, which is a youth empowerment company. And his story was, again, the same. Uh, he grew up in Reading, Pennsylvania. He was deaf in both ears. And he still graduated high school. He still graduated college. He started his multi-million dollar company. And that really showed resilience. That sort of showed perseverance and yeah. tackling on adversity. I was in the same situation. Poor kid, poor Puerto Rican kid from uh, Reading, Pennsylvania, who happens to be deaf in his right ear, um, overweight, had to overcome everything, every obstacle, basically on his own. And that's what really inspired me. I said, I can do this because people who have nothing have created something. And I need to find power in my misfortunes. And um, so that's pretty much where I, I went with that. Excellent story. Oh my goodness, you're incredible. So how many pounds have you lost in one year? 200. 200 pounds. One and year you're ago. Not, and then for a whole year, you haven't gained anything back. No, nope, it's all Absolutely been lost. Not. Okay. Okay, okay I want you to share what is the connection between you and Oreo? Because I keep on hearing this Oreo a lot. So tell us, share the story. So me and Oreo have a very special relationship. Um, okay. Oreos is one of the foods that I've always enjoyed when I was bigger. Um, ever since I found out they were vegan, <laughs> I always tell myself this is my healthy snack for the day. But I've always loved Oreos because it's always been there. Um, it's been there while I was facing poverty. It was there when I was bigger and it's there now. Uh, it's one of those things I carried into my childhood, to, into adulthood. And I told people I was still eating Oreos while I lost two, the 200 pounds. Um, now I don't eat as many Oreos. I eat serving size on, on whatever's on the package. Um, sometimes I sneak in a few more. I can't resist. Um, but I, I told myself, I want to get this Oreo sponsorship. I, I want to be able to represent Oreo because losing 200 pounds while eating Oreos is unheard of. 
unheard uh, of. I was just going to say, and I didn't know it was vegan either because my son loves Oreos. Yeah, I didn't know it was vegan until someone told me. Um, so Did you read like, uh, I'm going to research it right now. Did yeah, you try I, to research it if it is true? I went to Germany hmm. and uh, in high school as part of a student, um, German, German student exchange program. And I went to a donut shop and the Oreo donut, it said vegan. So I said, okay, maybe, you know, it's something has, to, and, like, and so, uh, my, my uh, friend from Germany said, no, these are, these are vegan. Or, you didn't know Oreos are vegan? I said, no, I did not know Oreos were vegan. And I did the research and they are actually vegan. So I- Maybe it is only in Germany because Germans are way too advanced compared to North America. I have to tell what, what city were you at? What city did you go to? I was in Reutlingen. Um, it was, I think, it was about a couple of minutes from Frankfurt. Oh, okay. I wanted to take a plane from Frank, uh, a connecting flight from Frankfurt to Reutlingen. So, uh, yeah, okay. I've Reutlingen is one of those. I, I can't pronounce it, but I know I was in a certain part of Germany. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, that is what we need to research because the Germans, trust me, for diabetes, they have a whole store that you can buy cakes, you can buy cookies, you can buy anything you want, mm -hmm. but they're specifically made for people with diabetes. It is shocking. I have never seen anything like that in Toronto, here in Canada or in the US or in any yeah. other country for that matter. Like I haven't seen the Germans right. are like, I find as much as I am not a big fan, but I, right. uh, they're very, very advanced when it comes to health. So right. maybe, no. yeah, but let's research. Maybe it is vegan here too, who knows? I'm, I'm pretty sure it's vegan in America because if it's not, then obviously, I don't care at this point. because I know, good. but you're still treating yourself. Eh? I, I would have like, sometimes I would steal one or two from my son's package, but uh, yeah, my son loves them. <laughs> They're so yummy, I have to tell you. So, so now you're working and yep. you're going to college mm -hmm. and you're writing yep. and you're coaching yep. and you're speaking. Yep. Oh my goodness, I'm just getting faint. It's just thinking about the whole list. So how do you make time? Um, I get up at 4.30 in the morning. And Excellent. I, 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 I really, and that's Eastern time, everybody, 4.30 yeah. Eastern time. Yeah. Um, and I make time. I, I've, I've told myself and I made it very clear, I'm not gonna make my dreams or aspirations um, a side hustle. It is my top priority. It's my future. This is what I work for. This is why I added more years to my life for, yeah. um, so I can live it. I don't have to rush it anymore. And that's yeah. a, that was a huge challenge when I was bigger. And I knew that I had a timeline now. I wanted to rush everything because I didn't know when the last day was going to be. Now I have more years added on. I have more days to really plan it out. So I'm you know, graduating with my first degree from Custown University um, as a communication studies major. I said I need to take it to the next step. I need to get my graduate degree in student affairs and higher education. Um, so I'm, now I'm a graduate student working on my second degree. And I said, I want to be a life coach and speaker. Um, people have told me I'm a phenomenal storyteller. Um, I, love, I started speaking at the age of 15. Wasn't that good, but I was still trying to perfect the craft. I wanted to look at my mentor who's Again, Carlos Ajeda Jr., phenomenal speaker, one of the top speakers in America, um, one of the most dynamic speakers in America. Um, I, I, I watched how he spoke and I watched the passion. I, and then I started seeing TED Talks. I started seeing motivational speakers. And I started reenacting what they did and started putting my story into it. It was just clicking. And I got to speak in numerous colleges, high schools. I even got to speak in Germany while I was there. Um, oh, wow. And it, it just became surreal. I said, I can make a career out of this. I'm passionate about this. Yeah. And life coaching aspect, I got certified during the pandemic because I had a lot of free time. I even became an ordained minister during the pandemic. Um, that's a very easy process. Um, yeah. I, I was very surprised how easy that was. But I became a life coach because I wanted to coach people one-on-one. -on -one. I wanted to teach them what I know um, and make it, make it accessible um, yeah. because I that's what I'm about. And I, I don't know if you have a question about me and accessibility, which I'm going to explain my book soon. Yeah. Um, 
then the writing piece. I wanted to put something out to this world. I know yeah. my voice, me speaking, it's only going to go so far, but I wanted to create a guide during my journey, during my process, how I reclaimed my passion, purpose, and how I put happiness in the center of everything I did. Um, I don't know if you want me to go into my book now. Um, no, wait, wait. I have a question for you. Okay, so I have watched you speak on January 8th at the event. And trust mm -hmm. me, I have done over two years Toastmasters and I got so many awards. And I'm not even half as good as the way you spoke. It was a lot of people were talking about you. It was incredible. Like you're a great speaker. You're a great motivational speaker. My question to you before we get to the book is you said you wake up at 4.30 in the morning. What do you do? When I wake up at 4.30 in the morning, I'm not going to lie, go on my phone to see if I have any emails. I didn't answer the day before. I kind of check social media quick. Not that long on my phone because not, not there's not much happening at 4.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of just let my body get energized, get structured. I drink a little bit of water, get up, shower. I read, uh, I read a chapter of a book. Um, I kind of, I don't pick a different book because then I confuse myself. So I kind of pick yeah. one book. I read a chapter a finish day. It. Mm -hmm. um, so I can finish it. Um, right now I'm reading Will by Will Smith. Uh, phenomenal mm -hmm. book. Okay. Um, I, very soon I will be getting to the book on discrimination because it's a great piece. It's a great yeah. tool for student affairs professionals. Um, and, you know, and from there I go to class. Uh, I go to class or work. I, after that, that's my time. Uh, I kind of study. I, I go, I go study. I go work on things. I do my business, social media. I do my lives. And then, you know, and then I kind of come up and I'm kind of just in my world up here. So I kind of yeah. think of ideas, things I can do. I treat myself and call my mother every day, call my father oh, every day. Oh, that is so I, cute. And then I go to sleep. Go <laughs> and to then sleep. I'm, I've been doing it all over again. I've been doing it. Okay. Because uh, uh, there was a study that I read early risers are the most productive people. I thought I was good uh, getting up at five every morning, but you beat me on this one. <laughs> That's 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, no, like four, yeah, I guess like about five o'clock. But for me, it is prayer and then affirmations and then a little bit of meditation and then mm -hmm. I get up. So I do, I do that. So let's talk about your upcoming book. Mm -hmm. So my upcoming book, Passion, Purpose, and the Pursuit of Happiness, um, is actually the name after the three things that I'm focused on. Yeah. Um, I created this book as a guide. Um, I want to help people overcome any obstacles that they're facing, change their mindset, because I feel like people are on the brink of greatness, but it, all it takes is just a mind shift, uh, mind sh uh, shift, shift of the mind. Um, sorry, I started my words. My, my hearing deficiency kind of slurs my speech. Um, so, it, so, you know, when I created this book, I wanted people to not only read it, but reflect, reflect on where they are in their life and how they can make adjustments. I make a lot of suggestions, but it's not me telling you what to do. It's suggestions. You take it and you reflect on it and you can write about it because there's also workbook pages in there for you to write down, drop down ideas. And I just wanted to create this book that's not only easy to read, but you get it. I, I, I give my own stories. I feel like we connect your stories. Um, yes, we do. I share about my weight loss journey. I share about me getting cheated on. I share other people's stories. Um, I don't use their names directly, um, but I share their stories because they gave me permission to. Um, just real life situations, we catch ourselves in these days. And, and mental you, health. Yep, yeah, and you, I also address my mental health. But I take it in order. I, I address passion, I address purpose, nice. and I address happiness. All three different sections because I feel like each thing is a stage. Yeah. Um, nice. I really put an emphasis on happiness because I feel we we tend don't we tend to not put ourselves first when it comes to our happiness. We want to make other people happy, and that's great. That's a great trick to have. And I don't discourage anybody, but we have to think about ourselves. Absolutely. We don't know. You don't know what's going to happen the next day, especially with me. I didn't know I was going to wake up the next day and I wasn't happy. 
but we got to put happiness and love at the center of everything we do. Yeah. Um, so the book itself, you know, with the pre-sale being February 26th, 12 p.m. Eastern. I've been okay. saying it times. It's pretty much ingrained in my head. Yeah. You know, you can get your, your copy for $5.95 um, from and just... And it's, it's like paper copy, not Kindle. Yeah. Yes, it's not Kindle or Audible. I had to figure that out. Okay, I'm 23 years old, everybody. Give me a break. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to figure it out, trust me. Um, but for now, it's paperback, but it's accessible because $5.95 um, for the pre-sale only um, because after the pre-sale, um, I'm going to be giving it a new price. That price is to be because I'm trying to come up with an accessible price um, so everybody can still afford the book, get multiple copies. But this is the time to get multiple copies because I, I throw out a, a, out a challenge because not only do I want someone to get this book for themselves, I want someone to get this book for someone else. So they can go through the journey together, figure it out together, have an accountability partner with them. Um, you know, get it for your child, get it for your mentee, get it for your romantic partner, um, get it for your partner in general, get it for a friend. I do not want nobody going through this journey alone like I did, which is why I challenge everybody to get another copy for a friend, uh, a loved one, a child, um, because I want everybody to experience passion, purpose, and pursuit of happiness together. Yeah. Um, this is why I want everybody to come together on February 26, 12 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> 12 p.m. Amazon. Eastern, I know. I am uh, going to get a few because one for my son and then for a few youngsters that I know that are going through a tough time because that is they need this your book more, I feel. So yeah. I'm going to get a few and I'm going to blast it also everywhere, like whether it's LinkedIn, whether it's Facebook, you know, because I'm also in other groups. So I'm going to blast it everywhere and it's going to be a bestseller in no time. I can yeah. guarantee you that. I, I told people it's a bestseller. It is. It, yeah. I, this is what I'm putting out into the world. Um, and I put a lot of time and effort into it. And I just really hope people appreciate that it's, it's going to be five ninety five for forty eight hours. Most people do it for twenty four. I'm doing it for a whole forty eight hours, and on a weekend, if anything, um, into that last day of um, February. I really want people to take advantage of that. Um, I really think if they want to buy those multiple copies, this is the time because even if you buy, I believe three or four, it's still going to be the equivalent of one. So. Yeah. I really just want this information to be across the world. Across um, the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. My God, you're like the most inspiring 23 year old I have seen like so far. Yeah. So you're incredible. Okay. We're gonna, so everybody, February 26th at noon Eastern time, grab not only your copy, grab copies and share it with family and friends, passion, purpose, and the pursuit of happiness by Giovanni. Negron Garcia, you will love it and you will love him. You will see him a lot speaking um, everywhere uh, very soon. And I hope he'll be able to come to Canada sometime this summer. Um, yes. Yeah, and then uh, that's, that, that was incredible. I really enjoyed talking to you. Okay, I have two personal questions that I ask everybody. I yes. don't know if you have seen it. If you had to visit three countries before you die, what countries would they be? First one, uh, I think um, we already know I will be, I would love to see Canada. Okay. Um, okay. That, that's, a, that's a must. I think it just Canada is just a beautiful place from what I learned, from what I've been seeing on YouTube. I have not been there yet, but I absolutely love the culture and the, the sympathy and empathy they show to the citizens, the accessibility. That's what all, I'm all about. So um, another place I have to visit, I want to see Australia. I have this thing with okay. kangaroos. Um, but I really just want to see Australia because it's very unique. I mean, I, I know everybody's creeped out, but like the, the spiders and the, everything that's going on is like a whole different world yeah. um, in Australia. So I want to see Australia. And um, if, everything, if everything calms down, obviously uh, I want to visit China. I, I would love to see China. There's a lot of tradition there, a lot of history, beautiful people, very disciplined people. I, I just want to learn. The culture there um and probably see japan while i'm there um not japan but i would like to go see japan as well i know i said four but um i know those are my top three china australia and canada and canada beautiful beautiful okay one last question 
if there is one rim, you're too young for me to ask you this, uh, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. If there is one rim that it hasn't even crossed your mind yet, but you would love to fulfill before you die, what would it be? You're too young for this question, but anyway. One I, dream I that you would love to fulfill. The only dream I want to fulfill right now, and it, it has nothing to do with me. I just want to see my father and my mother in the home of the dreams, paid by me, um, and them living stress free for the rest of their life. That's all I want. Oh my God, he just put me emotional. <laughs> that, that's the dream that- Oh my that, God, that is so sweet. That's the dream that I want. Um, I don't, like I said, the only thing I want from this is a comfortable life and Oreos in front of me. Uh, but, <laughs> oh uh, Look at me cry, crying and laughing at the yeah. same time. <laughs> the dream that I have, giving my mother the keys to the home, tell her to stay there, don't go back to work. My father, be comfortable, just live out your life. Uh, and that's not gonna that's gonna happen very soon in the next couple of years three years it's not yeah. uh, when you die like you're only 23 yeah so i don't know if that was the right question for you anyway it just made me cry uh that was yeah. so sweet it's gonna happen it's gonna happen like a lot uh, earlier than you anticipate maybe in the next two three years i that's what i see uh, is gonna happen so it's gonna happen that is a beautiful dream and I can ask you that question, maybe if I'm still alive, like in the next 10, 15 years, <laughs> I can ask you the same question because you would have something that you want to do. For me, it is to be an accomplished pianist before I die. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, I, that, that's pretty cool. I, I think that would be nice to learn the piano. I think yeah, would... yeah I, I just, an accomplished pianist always makes me cry. Like, and I wanted to start, like, and my brother told my mom, oh, this girl is a tomboy. You have to stop her from the classes. She's going to run away with all these bands. And my mom is like, oh, okay, no more piano classes. I hated my mom. I hated my brother. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I never had the opportunity really to get into classes. I have the piano sitting right here for my son. I bought it, but, um, I think my dream is just to be an accomplished pianist before I die. And I think I, it's doable. What do you think? Yes, it's very doable. Yeah. We want to see you here in the next 15 years. Gabby, you got this. You I definitely... know. <laughs> and maybe I could play for you uh, when I become good at it. Like I can play for you in your events. Who knows, right? Yes. When okay. I get to Canada. When you oh, get to I... Canada or I can come to... Uh... Oh, you're going to be in the I... time. I know. Unbelievable. Yeah, I can't wait. Okay, what is the last word for our whoever is going to be listening and watching? Any last word, any last advice? I, I always love to say this, Gabby. Uh, I don't know if you've seen my live streams. I always love to tell people um, you are capable, you are important, you are enough. What you offer to this world will always be enough. And never, ever put your dreams and aspirations to the side. Always treat it as a high priority, Absolutely. as you are a high priority in life. Um, I love you and may you have a wonderful life. Absolutely beautiful. I am so blessed you came. You were on my podcast. You were my guest and also my adopted son. Yes. Uh, yeah, Puerto Rican son. Uh, so everybody, I'm going to be posting his bio. Like I said, please do get in touch with him. And then we will be sharing and reminding people of uh, the publishing date of his book and uh, grab not only one but copies for friends for families for any youngsters teenagers who are struggling it's going to be a great great gift so uh mm -hmm. until the next episode uh sending you love and light and wishing you grace peace and balance take care stay